Catalytic hydrogenation, or just hydrogenation, is the addition of hydrogen across a carbon-carbon double bond. And in order for hydrogenation to occur, we need a metal catalyst. The metals that are most commonly used as catalysts are platinum, as we see here on this slide, palladium, or nickel. Not the three of them combined, but one of these three individually. Upon hydrogenation, an alkene is reduced to the corresponding alkane. And what you see is that we've added a hydrogen to each of the carbons of the double bond. Now what's interesting about hydrogenation is not only is it the addition of hydrogen across a carbon-carbon double bond, but it is a stereospecific reaction. And by stereospecific, we mean that only syn addition is observed. If you take this alkene and subject it to hydrogenation conditions, what you end up with is a compound that has two chiral centers. Now you might remember the formula for the maximum number of stereoisomers possible is 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of stereocenters, so you might think, well, we could make 2 to the power of 2 or 4 possible products. But in fact, we only observe two products in this specific reaction. Why? Because we only add the hydrogen atoms in a syn fashion. We get no anti-addition. We end up with this pair of enantiomers, and what they both have in common is that they both have hydrogens either both pointing down or both pointing up, which again result from syn addition, the hydrogens being added to the same face of the molecule. Now if you're wondering why do we need this metal catalyst, why do we need to add palladium, platinum, or nickel to the reaction mixture? Well, it's because that if we don't have the metal catalyst, the activation energy for hydrogenation is too high, and therefore the addition of hydrogen across the double bond is too slow. You can see here, the activation energy without the catalyst is very high. However, when we add our catalyst, not only does it lower the activation energy, but it provides an alternate pathway. The bottom line is that if the activation energy is lower, then we end up with a faster reaction something that's useful. Now as far as the mechanism of hydrogenation is concerned, what happens is that we have the surface of our catalyst, and that's what these black spheres here represent. This represents our metal, it might be palladium, it might be platinum, or nickel, we'll just write metal here. And so the hydrogen molecules get broken apart, and we end up with all these hydrogen atoms bound to the surface of the catalyst. And then the alkene comes down and complexes with the metal catalyst. And when it comes down, the hydrogen atoms are going to only add to the same face of the molecule. And thus, we end up with syn addition. Now, if we imagine these two white spheres as hydrogen atoms absorbed on the surface of the catalyst, we have the alkene coming down like this, and it complexes with the surface of the catalyst and then the hydrogen atoms are going to be added to the molecule in a syn fashion on the same face of the molecule. Just like that. And there they are, the two hydrogen atoms added to the same face of the molecule. Let's take a look at a practice problem. It says predict the products for each of these reactions. Well, in the first reaction, it doesn't matter that when I add a hydrogen to either one of these carbons, in the double bond, I'm not going to produce a stereocenter either way. So I'm not going to produce any new stereocenters. And therefore, syn addition will be irrelevant. We only get one product, this product that we have shown here. In the second example, I have my two carbons of my double bond. One of them already has a hydrogen attached to it. So when I add a hydrogen there, I won't be making a chiral center. However, when I add a hydrogen to this carbon, I will be creating a chiral center. And so let's draw what that would look like. So we have our one, two, three, four, five, five, six carbons. And I'm going to have one case where I add the hydrogen going down. And so my methyl group will be going up. And then I'm also going to get the enantiomer, which is going to look like this, where I have the methyl group going down and I have the hydrogen 
coming up. And so I end up with a pair of enantiomers in this case.